you so much, sir. And you will be presenting the book in the company of other distinguished guests, and I'm sure. Um, so I will be extremely brief. But let me use this unique opportunity to comment on something that is quite disturbing, considering the primaries that is going on in Nigeria now. The National Assembly made, made alterations in the electoral law. And now only what they call elected delegates are to elect people that will vote. One day, the whole Nigerians will wake up and say they are voting for a president. Who presented this presidential candidates for you? Very few people. At the national level, at the state level, at the central district, at the federal constituencies, at the state constituencies. Let me give you a very horrible example in my state, Bayelsi State. In one way or the other, those who created these words do their magic. But there's a particular state conference in Bayelsi State made up of only two words. And every word has three elected delegates. So it's only six persons that will decide the candidate, say for PDP. And meanwhile, four people are interested in contesting. Six people will select among these four and present somebody. And at the end of the day, when I may conduct election, then you'll say the whole world voted for that person. Because those are the only two people presented to you. And let me use the opportunity to advise the National Assembly that laws must be designed to solve problems, not designed to create problems. And laws must be made assuming that those who are making the law are blind, just like the judges. So assume that the judge is blind and just use the scale and the sword. Laws must not be made to target a group of individuals or an individual. And when you go into that system of making laws, you will make this terrible mistake that has really messed up the whole primary is going on. If you have not been involved in the process of primaries, you will be happy or you may not be happy. But those of us who have been involved, it is terrible. Are we bringing those who really know who is who to elect this delegate? Or somebody that could be bought with money? Take my local government, for example. My local government, by divine providence, had me as a former president. We have former governors, former deputy governors, former senators, and all the rest. But then only one elected delegate that you don't know where it is coming from that will come to Abuja to select who will become the presidential candidate. Is that the kind of democracy we will practice? And those who are making laws, we must make laws that will help to solve problems. Otherwise, you will make laws that are irrelevant and sometimes when we are so tied to law, you can now make laws that will become enemy of the people. If you look at what is happening in West Africa and some other parts of Africa now, that you people try to stick to the law, I think we should rather think about institutionalized democracy and make it as our culture. If you take a country like Guinea, the former president that was removed served 10 years, two, two, ten, no, uh, top, uh, 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 double tenure of five, five years, is a professor of law, not an ordinary citizen. Now amended the constitution, which is legal, make a new constitution, becomes a law. A constitution that will allow him to contest under two tenure of six, six years, meaning 12 years. Is that the kind of laws that we need in Africa? And of course, the military is strong. Because when the law becomes destructive, then the, the, the society becomes a banana republic. Anybody can take any action. And I believe that the best way for us to make our laws is to institutionalize democracy. This section, this 84, so that the controversial section that I've been on. To me, if you read through that law, 80% or more of that section have nothing to do with us, supposed to be expunged from the, uh, the Electoral Act. Because the National Assembly cannot make a laws and lock up all the political parties together. Political parties must have the leverage of doing certain things differently. 
Political parties have different history. If you take a place like South Africa, ANC started as a liberation struggle, armed struggle, metamorphosed into political party. If you look at this modern party, the economic freedom fighters, you must have read about Julius Malema and others. It's a more modern party based on the environment. These two parties cannot do things the same way. Creating a situation where every party must have the same way of getting those who will be represent them is nonsense. It doesn't help the practice of democracy. Allow parties, the leverage, to come up. The key thing is that I like is regulating them. The method they will adopt in selecting their candidates must be documented in their constitution and copies deposited in any. And that's what will be used to judge that party. Parties are not prestatals of the government. A National Assembly cannot make laws to over strangle the political parties. That is my thinking on this issue that is quite controversial. I wish that uh, members of the National Assembly are with us. We have to institutionalize democracy. The quality of delegates, and from what we are hearing, money has been shared. Some people have been going back to delegates to ask for reform when they fail election. It's extremely disgraceful. It is only in Nigeria you hear such things. I've been involved in elections across Africa since I left office. There are areas that the National Assembly can look at it. We are all that shares and accused of corruption. We should make laws that the corrupt practices in the electoral system, how do we reduce it? As long as we continue to use these hard-up delegates that don't know where they come from. The idea is that there are some people that are coming, money should be given for them to go and vote. And these things are made very public, and nobody cares. In some countries, you cannot give a gift to a voter. Like what we normally do, we have bags of rice with photographs of uh, candidates, matches, salt, and others, we distribute them freely. That is, you are inducing the electorate, which is a criminal offense. And we'll expect National Assembly to make laws to criminalize this. If you are found with us, you must, you must be charged to court. The security groups will seize your matchbox or bags of rice or trigger load of beans and charge you to court. So that people will stop doing what is wrong. Monies are being shared openly. Items are being distributed openly and nobody cares. These are areas that National Assembly should look at it. How do we curb some of these excesses? Not going into how parties select their, it should be their business of how they select their candidates. In some countries, like China, for example, from the little I know, of course, one lady is here, will tell us more if she wants to go into politics. But they combine selection and election. First, you must be selected. You must get to a particular level before you can contest some positions. You must be seen as a decent person. But here we now make all the parties have the same platform. Even if somebody's an armed robber, as long as a court of law has not convicted that person, you cannot stop that person from contesting in Nigeria, as long as the person has the money to buy the form. But in the system where the political parties have the powers, they can say, no, 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 no. We cannot sell your form, our form to you. So we must allow political parties, we must give them reasonable powers to control the kind of people, the quality of people they bring. If I tell you what is happening in some, I don't want to mention, but my state too is involved. The kind of people that are coming up to be the people that will represent us, it feels sad. So the National Assembly has to wake up. Some people are even blaming the president. The president did not sign this or he signed that. And that is another area that the National Assembly must wake up. You cannot wake up the president from sleep as they come and sign a bill, either a new bill or an alteration of an existing law. In this matter, the president can't be blamed. Before the president signs any bill to law, it passed through different processes. When the National Assembly, with all their committees, their joint committees and so on, finish their work, it goes through the legal drafting process.
the draft is ready, the office of the speaker, the speaker has so many aids. Every member of the National Assembly has a minimum of five aids paid by government. And one of them is supposed to get parliamentary experience or legal background. The speaker has more and the Senate president has more. What is your duty? Is it just to be following the speaker and the Senate president like a troop of monkeys or a, a, a baby of birds? They are meant to read this. They are meant to read this. They will read before it goes to the clerk of the National Assembly that will also have aids that will read through that draft. And before it gets to the president, when it moves to the executive, there are two offices that must also see that draft. That's just bureaucracy at the uh, uh, so, so that the president is not meant to make silly mistakes. So nobody should expect the president to wake up or come and sign this. He doesn't. He must go through the process. Our people must do their work in this country. We cannot just be taking money and sleeping. I think National Assembly, this is a good wake-up call. There are various aids and people employed to do certain things must work. And their laws must not target as individuals or group of individuals. The laws must be laws that can improve governance, and not laws that will feel they want to get advantage of it. In fact, the whole of this uh, uh, primary is going on is a mess. If you know the standard practice, you will, in fact, if it's, uh, yeah, yeah, all teachers here, Professor Jiga and others, if it is to be scored, this primaries we are doing cannot get more than 25%. And you cannot use that process to elect a president, elect senators, elect governors, elect House of Representatives. It cannot. It's already failed. The process is already failed, which is not good for this country. Yes, we'll manage and move on. We pray that good people should come. But we hope this, what has happened, this 2022 will not happen again in this country. Thanks for checking out Symphony on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe and like our videos for updates.